Welcome back to CBS 44's coverage of the 2015 River Run. Ryan O'Brien from ESPN Evansville 105.3 alongside Kurt Jones and Jim Nolan from Ultimate Fit. Drew Swander also joining us. Uh, Drew, part of the race today. And here we see runners making their way down the Twin Bridges. And Kurt, as somebody you recognize there. Yes, that was Jason Howell. He's one of our Ultimate Fit team runners, and I'll tell you, he's really been shining the last year or two running. He just keeps getting better and better. He had a great Boston Marathon, and I think we'll see uh, really good things out of him uh, in the future also. How many people on the Ultimate Fit uh, running team? You know, I don't know the exact number, but I'd say 20. Um, and, and the thing that we do is it's not just about the elites like you've been seeing. We go across the board. We've had uh, a 90-year-old gentleman on our team. It's about the experience and their love for the sport and uh, showing people, you know, that, that, that set an example that they can do this also. And here we see, uh, looks like another, is that another member of the team we see there? I believe that's an Ultimate Fit shirt. It actually and is. That's Philip Fry. He's <laughs> Philip uh, giving a little thumbs up to yeah, the Yeah, he feels to good enough to do that, which is awesome. So, Jim, let me ask you, for anybody that is interested uh, and wants to learn more if they would be interested in joining the team or, or just want more information on the team, how do they go about doing that? Well, the best thing to do is uh, have a resume set out for us and uh, just bring it into the store. And, you know, we'll just look at everything and see if they are part of the ultimate fit of uh, what we're looking for. As we continue to watch more runners come across the Twin Bridges, uh, Drew, why don't you tell us, uh, have you been involved in this race before? Yes, I have, uh, but it was the old race uh, many years ago, and uh, this is the first time I had the ability to actually participate. And I've got to say that what lies ahead with the hills of Henderson was a surprise. Now, obviously, we drive these twin bridges every day. Usually, the only time I've ever been on the twin bridges myself has been in a vehicle crossing them. What's it like to run across it as the wind comes across from the river? It's, a, it's, a, it's there. You can feel it. I'm kind of short. I was hoping that might be to my benefit and that handrail there would help out. But no, it, it's right in your face the whole way. And how far along, Kurt, are we in the race at this point? Are we, we haven't made it to the halfway point yet, I don't believe, have I we? I think, if I recall, it might have been four and a half here. Okay, so we're close. Yes, pretty close at that point. And, uh, you know, the miles add up. Uh, at that point, you're four and a half miles in, and you've got more coming. And like we've talked about the whole time, the the wind, so it all takes a takes a toll. So Jim, as you're now, let's talk about being at the halfway point here, and and you can probably expand on this a little bit better. Um, what's the feeling going through the runner's body right now? I know everybody's conditioned a little differently, but a typical runner, you're halfway through. Are you starting to feel the pain of it a little bit? Are you, where, where is the runner's mind at at this point in time? Well, what they should be thinking about right now is just filling the things out, making sure everything's okay, you know, just checking out their own body and making sure their pace is right on. And, and there's nothing going on like blisters forming or anything like that that they can feel in their feet. And, you know, they're, right now they're coming over the top of the bridge, so they're excited right now too because they just climbed the bridge. Now they're going down the downside and everything's probably feeling a lot better than what they were about, oh, 30, 40 seconds ago when they were climbing on the other side. So, you know, it, it's right here's where the race really starts. It's uh, that halfway point. You're listening to your body and seeing if you can push harder or if you're needing to back off some. I was going to ask, Drew, uh, being on, a, on the street like this, and obviously we see traffic driving by, does that even register with you that there are cars driving by or are you just in your own world at that point in time? Yeah, it's funny you say that because I was running over the bridge and I was oblivious to the cars passing. And then I was about at this position in the race and it's like, oh, yeah, it's traffic to the left of me. So, no, you zone, I zone out for sure. CBS 44's coverage of the 2015 River Run continues. Ryan O'Brien from ESPN Evansville 105.3 along with Kurt Jones, Jim Nolan from Ultimate Fit and race participant Drew Swander. And here is Gary May finishing up his 10-mile trip from Evansville to Henderson on his special specially made hand bike, and we had the chance to talk about Gary and his story. My name's Gary May. Well, I was in the Marine Corps uh, in Vietnam in 1968, having enlisted in the Marines after high school graduation in 67. I was there just a little over two months before I was wounded and medevaced out. I got there mid or early February 1968, and then I was medevaced out on April, uh, or in mid-April 1968. And I was on April 12th leading a squad-sized uh, 
uh, patrol in Vietnam uh, in the rice paddy area and I stepped on a landmine and the resulting explosion uh, caused the traumatic amputations of both my legs just above the knees. So that started my new phase of life as a person with a disability that I had never experienced before. Well, it actually, I don't remember the exact year, but uh, the Evansville Rehabilitation Center got some grant money to do uh, wheelchair tennis uh, for some of us from the community. And I had never, ever, hardly ever touched a tennis racket prior to that. But I joined that group and, uh, you know, we got out on Tri-State uh, Racket Club's uh, court and hacked around a little bit. I never did really take to that very well. But what that led to was the development of a community-based uh, wheelchair basketball team, which was more in my, uh, my uh, range of uh, familiarity at that time. So we had a community-based uh, wheelchair team that played for several years in a couple of different conferences here in the, the Midwest. So that sparked my interest in becoming more uh, active physically. And in conjunction with that, at that time, I was using my basketball wheelchair to just, you know, tool around the neighborhood and doing timed runs on a closed circuit just to see if I could improve my time on that. And then subsequently, I got my first version of the uh, hand cycle that was an attachment for my wheelchair basketball. I, I suppose that axiom that once you learn how to ride a bike, you never forget or you quickly recover it. Certainly some of the, the major principles of riding a two-wheeler upright bike about the mechanics of power delivery and that sort of stuff are, are the same. The differences here though have to do principally with seating and I've done a lot of experimenting with getting the seating comfortable and so that I can get maximum leverage and not feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide off. I use a, uh, a pneumatic cushion to help you know, conform to the uh, contours of my body and also to serve as a nexus between the body and the, and the bike. And the setup I have right now is working pretty well. Otherwise, I think the major uh, uh, hurdle for me has been understanding the mechanics of everything. I've never had a bike with so many gears and, and gizmos and uh, I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed at all of that at times. And, you know, I, I don't have the, uh, the real deft touch for figuring out, you know, what sort of movement I need to make on my cable to make the shifting a little more smooth than it was before. But it's been fun. I mean, it's been a great learning experience and certainly I, I, there's nothing I would give back or do over. Well, I think I was, I was pretty happy that I did the uh, Hammerfest, one of the Hammerfests last uh, summer and averaged a little over 14 miles an hour. That's the, been the fastest uh, I've ever been clocked. <laughs> so I, I think that was a significant accomplishment. And the river run last year was quite an accomplishment. That, I still bump into people all the time who say, oh, I saw you in the river run uh, last year. And, and that's encouraging to me. Again, it's a matter of of furthering the level of awareness that the general public has about the existence and accomplishment of people with disabilities. The choices one faces with the, uh, the onset of a major disability, it seems to me, are, all, are to quit or to go on. And clearly my choice has been to go on. And I think for, uh, for people new to the disability experience, one of the things that is a, uh, a learned trait over time is persistence and a related component is patience to keep trying di different things I mean it doesn't things don't always work out the way that you hope they'll work out the first time out of the shoot so it's a matter of sticking with it trying new things and related to that still is uh, taking responsibility for your own happiness and rehabilitation to do what you can to uh, not just rely on these uh, identified professionals who are supposed, supposed to know everything about what you need. They really don't. They only know what we're able to convey to them. And, and we can't convey that unless we take responsibility for ourselves and our happiness and, and help guide them to be able to help us.